Okay, so in this video, we will derive the well-known quadratic formula. So here's the statement. Suppose you have a quadratic polynomial, so a times x squared plus bx plus c, and you're trying to find the values of x that will make the equation equal to zero. The question is, how do we systematically find the values of x that will make this equation equal to zero, where a, b, and c are fixed real numbers? a is assumed to be non-zero, because if a is zero, we get a linear equation, and solving for x is trivial. We can make one more assumption. If a, in our derivation, if a is negative, we could multiply across by negative one, then our multiple of x squared would be positive, and then we're good to go. Now here's the statement. The equation can only be zero if and only if x is equal to negative b plus or minus, there are two solutions, the root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. So let's prove this simply by completing the squares. And again, we are assuming here that a is positive, so strictly greater than 0. Let's take the left-hand side, ax squared plus bx plus c. And the idea of completing the squares is the elimination of the linear factor, the multiple of x. So the question is, can we write this equation as something squared plus a constant. Well, let's see. What squared will give you a x squared? It will be obviously root of a times x. If you square this, you get a x squared. And again, assuming that a is positive. Then, we need a constant here. We're not too sure yet, so we can call this, say, uppercase a, for now. And then the leftover constant, plus uppercase b. Let's expand and see if we can figure out the value for a and the value for b. If we multiply out, we'll get root of a times x times itself, so ax squared, plus twice of this times this, so 2 root of a ax, plus a times a, a squared, of course, plus b. So if this is to equal this side, well, there's only one multiple of x, which is 2 root of a, a. And the multiple of x here is b, so this would have to be equal to b. And so now we can solve for uppercase a as a function of b. Let us do so. So 2 root of lowercase a uppercase a must equal b. We isolate uppercase a and it is simply b over 2 times the square root of a. So now we have this part. Well, the only constant term on the right of the equality is uppercase a squared plus uppercase b. On the left hand side the constant term is c. So c must equal this. But, if you think of it, we now know what a is as a function of lowercase a and b. We have uppercase c here, so we can isolate for the value of b. b has to be lowercase c minus uppercase a squared. But we know what uppercase a is, and if you square this, you get b squared over 2 squared is 4. If you square root of a, you get a. And so now we're good to go. Uppercase a must be b over 2 root of a. Uppercase b must be c minus b squared over 4a. So we can plug back in here. So the equation ax squared plus bx plus c was the original equation, can be rewritten as root of a times x, 
plus uppercase A, B over 2 root of A. This is all squared. Plus uppercase B, which is lowercase c minus B squared over 4A. And now we're good to go. What was our goal? To solve for x in the given equality. Well, instead of using the original equation, we will use this form now. So we want to equate this to 0 and solve for x. And because we have gotten rid of the linear factor, the constant term times x, this will be rather easy to solve. So first, let's send this on the right-hand side. So we'll be left with root of ax plus b over 2 root of a, all squared, is equal to, this will become positive, b squared over 4a minus c will become negative. If we combine as a single fraction, we have to multiply c by 4a over a, and so we'll get b squared minus 4a times c over 4a. And this is starting to look familiar now. So let's see where we're at. The left-hand side is this. And this equals b squared minus 4ac over 4a. Okay, well how do we get rid of the square? Right, We're saying this expression squared equals this expression. Well, you have to be careful here not to simply take the square root as there are possibly two solutions. As an aside, think of if I say x squared equals 9. Well, x can be 3 or negative 3, as if you square a negative sign, it becomes positive 1. And so x is not just root of 9, but plus or minus the root of 9. And the same thing is true here. So if the square of this expression is the right-hand side, then this expression inside the square must be plus or minus the root of the right-hand side. So root of a x plus b over 2 root of a must be plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 4a. We're almost there. We're trying to isolate for x, so let's subtract both sides by b over 2 root of a. So we'll get negative b over 2 root of a, plus or minus. And here I'll break up these two fractions. Right? If you remember, the root of a quotient is the quotient of the square roots. So I'll take the root of the numerator b squared minus 4ac over the root of 4a, but the root of 4 is 2. Root of a is root of a. And finally, we can solve for x by dividing through by root of a. So if we divide by root of a, we'll have root of a times root of a, which will be give us giving us root of a squared, which is simply a. So I have negative b over 2a plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac. And the same goes here. We're dividing the entire right-hand side by root of a. And so root of a times root of a once again is a. So it would be simply 2a. And if you notice, both fractions are over the same denominator, 2a. So we can put as a single fraction negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. 
and this is the well-known quadratic formula. If we go back, if ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, and a is non-zero, x can be negative b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And of course, as long as a is not zero. And this is how you derive the famous quadratic formula. Let's look at one example with actual numbers for a, b, c, and just see that this is really easy once we have it. So suppose the equation, that is a quadratic equation, is the following. So 2x squared minus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0, and we're trying to solve for x. Remember that the equation is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. And so in this case, a is positive 2. b, because it is plus b times x, so it is b is negative 3, as negative 3 is plus negative 3x. And plus c plus negative 4. And now we're good to go. We know that the solutions to this equation are x is equal to negative b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, which in our case give us negative b is positive 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared is 9 minus 4 times a times 2 times c negative 4 over 2 times a, 2 times 2 is 4. And then we can of course simplify 3 plus or minus negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 times negative 4 is positive 32 plus 9 is positive 41 over 4. And so we have the two solutions to this, uh, this equation, which we can write as 3 plus root of 41 over 4, comma, 3 minus root of 41 over 4. So we have the two zeros of this polynomial. What if about factoring this quadratic? If we wanted to factor this polynomial, how would we do it once we have the two zeros? Well, if you have an arbitrary quadratic polynomial and you have the two zeros, say so this is alpha 1, the first zero, call this alpha 2, the second zero, then your quadratic will factor, so ax squared plus bx plus c, will factor nicely as simply a, times x minus the first zero, alpha one, times x minus the second zero, alpha two. So once you have the two zeros of a quadratic polynomial, factoring it is quite easy. Pull out the multiple of x squared, and the two factors are x minus the two zeros. So let's factor now this polynomial, since we have the two zeros. So if the question was, factor completely over the real numbers, 2x squared minus 3x minus 4. First step, we pull out the multiple of x squared, 2. And there are two factors as we have a quadratic. x minus the first 0. And it doesn't matter which one you choose as the first 0. So we could pick this one. So x minus all of 3 plus root of 41 over 4 times x minus the other 0, and so minus all of 3 minus root of 41 over 4. And this is how you can factor this quadratic polynomial using the well-known quadratic formula, finding first the zeros and then factoring out the quadratic. And that's it.